Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. Today I've decided I want to go and find some snow. We've actually had a reasonable amount of snow coming down on and off over Christmas but it all melted yesterday when it started raining so let's go up the mountains to the ski centres and let's see how much snow we can find to have fun in with the Tesla. I'm starting off this morning in McDuff. I've already driven across here and I will drop a couple of video bits of that so you can have a look at what it's like on the way in. Um, I've just been into the delightfully named Spotty Bag Shop, which is kind of a local department store that sells literally everything. And uh, we're going to head off now. Um, I've got 80% or so charge in the car, which is absolutely plenty for this kind of trip. Again, if you've got a Tesla, you don't need to worry about charge. There is no range anxiety if you've got a Tesla Model Y long range or any of the other Teslas that have got a chunky battery in them. Running down the hill now into Dufftown and there's a lot more snow. This is good, but the roads are completely clear, which is also good. There is actually a webcam at the Lecht Ski Centre that shows not just the conditions there, but also at the snow gates that we go through. So I know that the road is open. I wouldn't be bothering to do this otherwise. Tractor with a big plow on the front and a huge tank full of grit on the back. And it's stuff like that that keeps all of the roads open here in rather wintry times. This is really pretty. I love this, there's a drop off on the side here and there's a wire mesh fence and some wooden posts holding it up, but that's not really gonna stop you if you um, slid off the road. And I guess it's not gonna stop the snow and things from drifting across the road either. Quick efficiency update, we have done 57 miles, it is one degree centigrade. Oh, is that Celsius? Whatever. Anyway, we have done 314 watt hours per mile, which is a little over three miles per kilowatt hour, which again, I think is decent. Five miles now to Lex Ski Center, and the hills and mountains are really opening up in front of us. And yes, plenty of snow, although, it is a little bit patchier than I imagined, but as I'm not actually going skiing, I'm not sure that really matters. We just came out to have a look. And this little valley that we're um, in just gets narrower and narrower as we head up to the top. 20% gradient, which obviously is no problem when you've got mahoosive amounts of power and all-wheel drive like I have. Oh, be quiet. Nearly there now. So, we're gonna park up and have a wander in. So where is the main bit of the car park? It's over here, isn't it? So, it looks very full. Let's go in and have a look. Any of these look any better? No. Wow. So what we're going to do is we're going to head for the next one. So there's quite a few ski centres in this part of the world and we're going to go to Glenshee next. Nice. This is absolutely gorgeous. Just look at this, and the size of the snow boulders at the size of the road that have been cleared to keep the road open. Of course from the top it's downhill all the way obviously, which is Regen City, which means that I keep my speed nice and under control and I'm sticking much needed power back into the batteries because you always need power. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is amazing. Would you look at this? Taking it nice and steady as we go down here. Yeah, several people, I've parked in there. 
I'm not going to do it today because I'm just looking at the people walking and it looks a wee bit skatey. So I think we'll carry on. Wow, wow, wow. Another one of these amazing narrow bridges and that actually pinches <laughs> quite a bit at the bottom end there. Um, the Tesla Model Y is quite wide, but that's not enough to cause it a problem. Hang on, here comes another one. Note the yellow and black hatchings, which are there just to warn you that the road pinches in, especially at night, <laughs> because there's not much warning, it just goes <laughs> I love how the road is just this clear strip through the landscape. Um, you've got no real idea what's off on either side, other than the fact that you don't want to get your car onto it and just this ribbon of tarmac with snow borders running across it it looks fabulous there's plenty of grit down on the road so we saw the tractor earlier that had the big barrels of grit on the back the councils are really proactive at plowing and gritting to try and keep these roads open as much as possible yes there are snow gates that they will close if there's snow drifts going across them but again they will try and clear those as quickly as they can but it's one degree and the road is absolutely covered in grit and it's coming up on the underside of the car so that is reassuring because it does mean that we're not going to see pockets of ice forming that we can start sliding on <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice blind summit without a warning sign it just goes wee over the top um, and what a view it gives you as you come over wow oh by the way if you've been wondering these poles that you get uh, periodically along the side of the road are snow poles and the idea is that when there has been a blizzard and the road has been covered that you can follow the poles which stick out of the snow and that shows you where the line of the road is when you're trying to plow it we are coming down to the bridge where they're replacing it. So here, there's an old bridge over there and they've culverted the stream or whatever it is and just made for a nice wide uh, turn. They're doing the same thing down here at Gernshield. And the sad thing is that the old bridge that we're about to cross is going to be made pedestrian and cycles only. Actually, no, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because it preserves it and means that for another few centuries people will be able to enjoy going over this bridge as they have been doing since it was built but can you see the bridge here this is old and humpy and honestly i think it's absolutely fantastic that we can still do this this is probably the last time i ever will I can understand why they're replacing it. It did say unsuitable for long vehicles, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think a coach or a big truck or something would just completely ground itself to a halt on the top with the wheels spinning around in the air as it's completely grounded. It's a bit slushy, but nothing dramatic. Remember, I am stupidly still on OEM summer tyres, although they are reasonably competent, and I have got emergency snow socks. The gates are open, so again the road is open, and I suspect this is as bad as it'll get. Let's hope that's true. But look at this, just look at this. I do hope that you are all sticking and watching this video. I'm going to have chunks of this running where we're just enjoying the view. Because you don't need me talking over all of it. But this is absolutely gorgeous. And you're sat at home wherever you are in the world. And I know there are people watching from literally everywhere. Thanks so much for doing so. But I hope you're going to enjoy this as much as I am. Now it's one degree, so it's possible there's some ice, but 
the roads had been gritted, although if I'm honest, I'm not sure whether this has been. So we're going to take it nice and gently as we start to drop down the hill. Again, sitting with jaw hanging open at just how amazing all of this looks. So I am going to double flash him and I'm going to back it up a wee bit and there is space here for him to come past and hopefully he'll be able to do so. Yeah. Nice cooperative driving when you're on single track roads. That's all you need to do. So for anyone who is unfamiliar with roads like this, it's just a bit of cooperation. You've both got to get past each other, so don't drive like an absolute divvy and think about other people and where you might need to pass them. Looks a bit slushier again, so I am easing down on the regen just to put, basically pull the car up so that we are doing a nice gentle speed as we go downhill on the slushy stuff. So we have got somebody coming up and we need to find somewhere to pass. So I am actually sliding a wee bit as I go down here. Is he flashing me down? Yes, he is. So take it nice and steady down there. Where is he stopping? Is he stopping here? What's he doing? He's stopping there. Great. We'll still take it nice and slow down here because we've got to actually slow down to get into this passing place as we get to it. And it is a little bit on the twitchy side suddenly. Thank you very much, sir. And then we've got a caravan coming as well. So we'll get off completely. <laughs> we'll wait for him to come. This is always going to be the worst of the roads that we go on today. Okay, now they've gone, we'll pull back out nice and gently back onto the normal tarmac and we're good again. Part of the other reason for going nice and slowly in these conditions especially when you get to a place like there where you couldn't see very far ahead is just in case you've got some absolute panic absolutely hammering it up the other way. So what was I saying about someone absolutely hurtling it along? And there's two of them so I'm just gonna roll it off onto here, let them pass and then roll it back on again. Easy. Skid risk, yep. <laughs> Which is why we're going slow now then. Okay, he's li <laughs> he's just plowing on. Slow it down, mate. I see the main road. No. Yep. Slightly skiddy at the bottom, actually. So as we roll through Royal D-side towards Balata, a quick update for you on efficiency. So again, it's one degree. You can see what the conditions are like. Um, plenty of lying snow uh, on the ground and slush. In the 90 miles since I left home, we have done 307 watt hours per mile. So that is about three and a quarter miles per kilowatt hour, which again, I think is, is pretty good considering that it's fairly cold and there's plenty of snow about. Once again, Tesla is showing that the conditions do not affect performance one little bit. <laughs> this almost looks black and white ahead of me because the sky is a shade of grey and then the mountain is effectively black and white and greys all mixed together so there's no colour there at all. That looks really freaky. Oh, just look at this. This really is Wonderland.
Is that a fire engine ahead of me? Huh. I'm not entirely sure. It's blue flashing lights. It looks more like a tractor or some kind of giant quad bike or something. I'm not entirely sure. An ambulance. Oh, it's a tracked vehicle. <laughs> that is a tracked ambulance on its way up the hill. Oh dear, that does suggest to me that one of the skiers has hurt themselves. And I'm hoping the car parks might be a little bit more forgiving than the ones were back at. is over this side yes it is okay and there's loads of people in the road so we'll stay out of their way that's got corns across it which isn't looking helpful is it let's have a look can we get in the end yeah we can get in the end here bags of space i think this is what we came here for it is very, <laughs> very, very snowy. An absolutely amazing place to drive your car to. If I haven't said so already, I'm not really interested in skiing. But what I am interested in is driving my Tesla up interesting roads to interesting places on roads kind of like this one. We're already at 660 meters, 2,150 feet, but the road south does go a little bit higher up, but I can't be bothered going up the Spittle of Glenshi, which is the very, very, very top, because I suspect the car park where you can turn around might be a wee bit on the snowy side. So we're gonna stop here and head back down the hill, but don't go anywhere. Don't think about turning off because we've got to do the view going back that way and it was already looking stunning in the mirrors. So hang around. Anyway, we're going to Balmoral. So on our way down here, I am just easing my foot on the throttle to balance the amount of regenerative braking we're getting. I don't need to go particularly quickly. Um, I just want to roll it down the hill um, nice and gently. It is always an odd feeling when you first get a car that's got regenerative braking when you're putting your foot on the throttle to slow down but you've got to start thinking about the throttle as both power and brake because it will literally do both and it's that balancing point between power and regen that you have to get used to but once you do it just becomes instinctive We've been going for five miles, five miles since the ski centre and the current drive information has only just gone into positive for energy use. So in five miles, we used no power at all, none. It was actually showing negative numbers for most of the way down the hill. So power consumption at one point was minus 82 watt hours per mile. As I promised, is quite pretty. So you've got the River Dee uh, off to our left hand side. You have got more big snowy peaks just on the horizon over there. And we're heading towards those. I did get feedback on one of my winter driving videos that I wasn't going fast enough for my claims of mega Tesla efficiency to be valid. Um, it's like now I'm doing 45 to 50 miles an hour on a road with a 60 miles an hour speed limit, but you can't really do 60 down here. Maybe if you've got a completely clear run and it's a bit warmer, but I haven't got a clear run. You can see I've got traffic ahead of me and pretty much every time that you drive a road like this, you're gonna find there's a load of traffic ahead. So unless I'm gonna go trying to bomb past everybody and there are what, 
three cars ahead, maybe a few more ahead of them. Um, yeah, there is. There's more than three, four or five. So unless I'm going to go and overtake all of those guys, I'm going to sit behind them. So I'm kind of doing the road speed that you can do in the conditions. So the efficiency that we're getting is absolutely and entirely valid. And at the moment, admittedly, with a long downhill run from um, the ski centre, but we have driven up the same hill to get to it, on 115 miles, I have got 300 watt hours per mile showing, 300. So you are well past, what, about 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour, somewhere around that. It's a good number considering that it's been snow on the ground most of the trip and slushy conditions in quite a few places. And let's not forget some serious hill climbing. You know, both of the ski centers that I've been to were higher than 2,000 feet and you know I've climbed up from sea level because we started off in Banff so I've done the hill climbs and I've driven in the cold and I've driven in slush and snow and I'm still getting mega efficiency now that's not saying anything about my driving although I do know how to drive in these conditions but that is because the Tesla drivetrain is just mind-blowingly efficient Say whatever else you like about the company or Elon or the cars or the way that they're designed, but the actual electrical gubbins, the heart of an EV, so the batteries, the inverters, the motors, the drivetrain is ridiculously efficient if you're driving a Tesla. And that is one of the key things about them. You've got cars which are fabulously efficient in terms of the way that they use energy and you've got the supercharger network which is by far and away the best of the public charger networks and is also at the moment pretty much the cheapest and that's why you should just get a tesla it really is the only option if you want to do any kind of reasonable trips in an ev nearly at balmoral well as close as the public can actually get to balmoral which is actually behind us now on the right hand side on the southern bank of the river. Right the first time. Too many different bits of we'll drive up and have a look. Love this bridge. And that is as far as you can get. So that's it for this episode of Just Get A Tesla. I'm gonna put a graphic on the screen now showing what my energy use is at the very, very end uh, of the trip when I get home. So don't forget to like and subscribe. There's new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. I've got more adventures coming up in 2023 and I'll see you on the next one.